All right, so we have one more major topic to talk about uh, when it comes to KKT. Um, and it's major because with everything we've talked about with KKT uh, up to this point, um, we, there's still an elephant in the room, which is that really what we're interested in here when we're talking about constrained convex optimization with inequality constraints is we want to be able to do constraints that have hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, millions of constraints, right? In modern optimization, um, in modern applications, that's what we, that's the space that we need to do, uh, we need to work. And in that case, KKT is actually not that um, useful to us. It has some major problems. Um, and we saw in the, um, in the last example that I looked at, where even with two constraints, we've got four things to check. With three constraints, we'd have eight um, conditions to check. Um, we'd have, we have these um, explosion um, of, of numbers of combinations of constraints that we have to check uh, every time we add a new constraint in. So by the time we're up to a thousand constraints, we've got two to the power of a thousand um, things that we need to check. We need to do that many different solutions uh, of the KKT equations and the whole thing blows up. So there's some, there's some problems here, right? Like these KKT conditions, even though we can write them down, they can still be really difficult to solve. You know, partly because we've got a system of nonlinear equations, um, and so we have to probably uh, solve these things numerically each time. Um, you know, we can say we can get around that by using the optimization techniques we've learned up to this point. But that combinatorial explosion uh, of numbers of combinations of constraints that can check, that kills us. Right? Um, no matter how good your, your computation is or how efficient your algorithms can be, if you have to check two to the 10,000 uh, different combinations of constraints to solve your problem, you're done. You know, there is no computer, there is no amount of compute um, that can do that for you in any reasonable amount of time. So what we need to do is we actually need, to an, al we need an algorithm here. We need to be able to move through this space of combinations of constraints um, efficiently so that we're always heading downhill, um, we're always heading towards the global minimum, right? We're always heading downhill in our, um, uh, uh, in our cost, overall cost function, but you know, keep it, uh, we need to move through different combinations of constraints and try and find uh, the minimizer. So, that's what, we're, that's what gradient projection does for us, and what we're here, where we're heading towards here is an algorithm to actually do this stuff for us um, efficiently. So to make life easier, we're gonna restrict ourselves to linear constraints, which means that this is the problem uh, that we're gonna be solving. So we're gonna minimize a convex continuously differentiable function f um, subject to uh, a bunch of uh, uh, constraints, you know, KKT-like constraints, something is less than something else, but we're just going to do linear constraints, AX is less than or equal to B. So where A is a matrix uh, and B is a vector. So there won't be anything, there won't be any circles or anything like this uh, in, our, um, uh, in our constraints. You know, that's a bit limiting that we can't have curvy constraints. Uh, anymore. It's not actually so bad, um, and that's because, um, well, I mean, even if we had curved constraints, we could approximate them by, we could approximate them locally by, uh, uh, by straight lines. Um, so this is, you know, we can still apply this to a, um, to a large class of functions. And that it just makes our life easier here. So the big idea of this gradient projection algorithm is um, if I've got, if I'm trying to do some minimization and I've got a bunch of linear constraints, well, if you've done optimization and operations research and learnt about the simplex algorithm, you sort of have this notion about moving around the, uh, moving around the edges uh, of all of these constraints. We've seen a lot of the time uh, that our um, minimizers end up on the boundaries um, uh, of the set formed by our constraints, and so the big idea is to have an algorithm that moves around that boundary. And it's always, always tries to head downhill, um, always tries to head towards uh, the global minimum, but sticking on the boundary of my, um, uh, of my constraint set. So to do that, we introduce um, the set, um, we introduce uh, the set here uh, of, these, um, uh, of these vectors u, 
uh, that you know that stick that move onto the boundary um, for all i in my um, uh, active constraint constraint set. So we're going to let s here um, uh, uh, be this set of directions uh, from some point x um, that stay on the boundary of my active constraint set. So for um, u to stay on the boundary of my active constraint set, I need that uh, u transpose times the gradient uh, of g. Right, so remember the g are linear constraints here. Uh, we need that the, uh, that dotted product has got to be equal to 0 uh, for all active constraints i. So another way of writing this is just that um, uh, if I take, uh, if I swap the order of these, so this is a dot product, so uh, u dotted with gradient g is equal to uh, uh, a gradient of g dotted with u, uh, and that's what this second line is here. And the ci's there are just, you know, each ci is just the gradient of gi, and actually uh, each uh, ci transpose is going to be the ith row uh, of this matrix A, right? And that's just because, remember, my constraints are linear, uh, so each gradient, uh, each gradient of g is going to come from um, you know, the derivative of this linear function. So it's just going to um, be the row, um, be each row of the matrix A. So that's my set uh, of directions that stay on the boundary of my active constraints. Now, if I move in the direction, uh, if I move in the direction u, uh, um, yeah, so if I'm at some point x and I move in the direction of u, uh, then the same set of constraints, so the same, uh, the constraints that are active will stay active. And that's actually, uh, that's actually easy to prove. So let's just explain why that is. So if I start at some point x and I move some infinitesimal distance, so some small distance in the direction of u, right, uh, uh, then I stay uh, um, you know, on the boundary, uh, I still have, my idea is that if I started off with gi of x equals 0, if I move in the direction of this u, um, uh, then this remains, this whole expression here remains 0. I remain on the boundary. So how would we prove this? Well, let's do a Taylor expansion of this. Let's just do the differentials here. Uh, so um, here I'm taking, I'm starting, centering uh, this expansion at the point x, and I'm moving a small distance in the direction of u. So this would be gi of x uh, plus lambda is just a scalar, uh, and then I'm going to have the gradient of g coming out here. So this will be uh, u transpose gradient gi evaluated at x. Okay. And so another way of writing this would just be gi of x, so let's just use the notation that I set down before, um, u transpose um, of, uh, multiplied by uh, multiplied by g, gradient of gi, well that was what I called ci transpose, so, and that's the um, ith row uh, of a. So now gi uh, of x is equal to zero, right, because that's what it means to be on the boundary. Right, so that's what, uh, from the definition uh, of a point x that is on the boundary, right? And then this second term uh, is, um, is also equal to zero, and that's by the definition uh, of, my set, uh, of my set S, right? So what it means for, um, for u to be in this set S is that ci transpose times u, or u transpose times the gradient of gi uh, of x is equal to zero. So that term is equal to zero just because u transpose times ci of t is equal to zero. So gi of this new vector is equal to zero, which means that x plus lambda u is inside of s of x. That's the point. So we stay on the boundary. So if we can find these um, directions u, um, then I stay on the boundary, right? I stay with the same set of um, of active constraints activated. Now what do we want to do here? Well, if I, I want, really what I want to do is I want to be minimizing my cost function f. So I want to be moving around this boundary, the boundary of all of my constraints, um, but I want to be doing that in such a way that I'm moving towards 
a global minima, right? So I want uh, that you transpose, you know, this um, uh, this new direction. Uh, uh, I, if, I, if, if that is dotted with the gradient, um, the gradient of f, then I want that direction to be negative. I want to be moving downhill overall, but along the boundary of my constraint set, um, so that I'm heading towards the minimum. So I'm not just moving around in any direction. I'm moving around in, the, uh, in a direction that takes me towards, hopefully, uh, the global minima. So this is what we're doing. Right? So we have this constraint set where at some point here, x, um, some estimate, uh, some current guess at the solution, I have my um, set s, that represents the boundary of my active, con my active constraints. And then, you know, I have the gradient negative f of x, so the overall downhill heading towards the global minima might head in some other direction here, right? It heads out of that set. Uh, and what I want to do is I want to compose this blue vector into two vectors, u and w, such that u stays in my, uh, in, in my boundary set, in my constraint set. So the idea is that if I can find u and w, such that vectors u plus w, such that they're orthogonal, and are equal to the direction downhill in my overall cost function landscape, uh, then that will give me this uh, direction u, which stays on the boundary of my constraints, my active constraint set, um, yeah, but is heading you know, in the direction, in the same direction of negative f of x. So I want to do an orthogonal projection of the negative gradient of f of x onto my set s of x, onto my boundary of the constraints. I'll show you a picture of what that looks like in just a sec, um, but you know, you already know how to do this technically. Um, this is the, these orthogonal projections are things that we talked about uh, all the way back in Maths 1. Um, you know, there is a, a theorem that talks about how to do it, you know, the orthogonal projection onto the null space of some matrix uh, is you know, particular y uh, for some orthogonal projection matrix where, et cetera, et cetera, where the columns of Vnor form an orthogonal basis for the null space of M. So um, the question is, uh, what's, the, uh, what's the null space? What, is, uh, what are all those um, uh, terms been? Well, the null space of a matrix, of a matrix M is the set of vectors uh, for which M times U is equal to zero, right? And so that equals zero, uh, comes about because I'm wanting to stay uh, in this set S, right? Um, that's, uh, that's representing that I'm, I'm staying in this, my set S here. So I need to find, to be able to apply this lemma here, I need to find uh, this, um, orth this orthogonal basis for the null space of M, which you can do uh, in MATLAB, right, by solving M U equals zero. And then the question just becomes, what's M, right, for this problem? Uh, where I've got, uh, where I'm not just doing this generally, but I'm doing it in my specific case uh, where I've got uh, the blue vector here is negative gradient um, of f. Uh, what is m? Well, it's just formed of, um, formed up by the, um, the gradients of my constraint functions, which are, uh, uh, you know, um, just made up of the rows of this matrix A from the constraints. So there is a recipe to do this. Um, yeah, it is to take the um, uh, it is to take the columns uh, the columns of this matrix A, stick them into a matrix, find the uh, uh, find the null space for it, and then I can do this uh, orthogonal orthogonal projection. I can find these descent directions. There are proofs of these two of this lemma in this um, of this lemma in this theorem. Uh, we'll pass that off uh, to the notes uh, and or um, uh, a separate video, um, if there's any uh, desire for it. Um, but the, the proofs of those are straightforward, well, straightforward in inverted commas, linear algebra um, sorts of proofs. So what I really want to show you here um, is the idea, uh, before we go into actually um, deriving and proving uh, the gradient projection algorithm, um, of where we're heading with this. So the idea of, um, of this whole algorithm uh, is something like this. So 
these orange curves here are going to be level curves of some, uh, of some cost function f of x, which is going to have its minimum uh, at the origin. So this is some sort of um, symmetrical quadratic cost function. So imagine that you know, the, 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 the global minimizer here is at the origin, uh, and it goes symmetrical out uh, on, on any other side. And then I've got a few different constraints. So I'm going to have the constraint, uh, you know, I've got to be positive, got to be in the positive quadrant. So I've got to be um, uh, greater, x2 has got to be greater than zero, say here. Um, and then I'm going to have the constraint uh, that x1 has got to be bigger than one. And I've got this diagonal constraint, the green line here. Uh, I've got to satisfy all of those at the same time. So my feasible region, you know, my convex set, that I'm um, looking for my solution over here. Uh, is the green region. The idea of the gradient projection alg algorithm is you pick a guess at the solution, right? So you pick some x naught that starts somewhere. And then the gradient projection algorithm is what takes you to, um, firstly, it checks, you know, is the minimum uh, inside, uh, is, you know, is the global minimum inside the green region? No, it's not. The global minimum is going to be at zero here. So head downhill, directly towards, uh, you know, in the, in the gradient, of, in, the, in the direction of negative gradient f uh, of x naught, so head towards the origin where the minimizer is, and, and stop when you get, when you hit their boundary, right? If the, if the minimizer is not in the green region, it must be somewhere on the boundary in this constrained problem. So we move uh, in a sensible, in a steepest descent sort of direction until we hit the boundary. Once we're on that boundary, I want to move around the boundary, right, until I find where, um, until I find uh, where the, uh, uh, where the minimizer is. So knowing that I want to, uh, I want to stay on the boundary, I want to keep heading downhill overall. So I keep on heading uh, in the direction of negative gradient of f, right, so keep heading towards the, um, towards the origin, basically, but staying on my boundary. So the next step that I would take in this gradient projection algorithm um, is to head directly down along this blue constraint here, along this bound, blue boundary, until I can't go any further. I stop at the intersection of my two constraints, and then I can keep getting lower, right? I'm still not at the, um, if I head uh, along the green, the direction of the green constraint here, I keep heading downhill overall, right? So this point here at x3 is lower relative to the origin uh, than x2 is. So I head along uh, the boundary in that direction until I hit the minimizer. Uh, and that's an algorithm to take me uh, to the minimizer. So hopefully that looks a bit like um, the, hopefully that looks a little bit like the, um, the simplex algorithm uh, for those of you who have uh, looked at that before. Uh, and it has this very sensible idea that I always want to be heading downhill. I always want to be taking steepest descent um, directions, but with the constraint of always staying on the boundary of my um, constraint, um, you know, on my constraint set. So always having, um, uh, uh, having my active constraints my, my, in, the, in the set of my active uh, constraints. So I'm heading down as steeply as I can, but staying on the boundary until I get to the minimizer. The machinery of that is this machinery of orthogonal projections. Um, and to do orthogonal projections, we need this machinery of uh, finding the bases for a null space. Uh, but the gradient projection algorithm that we'll talk about next time um, is exactly this idea in this picture of always staying on the boundary but heading in the steepest descent direction. And where we're heading towards um, is actually writing down, deriving this algorithm, um, and then actually using it in practice.